Hi guys, Irish Trekkie here. Thought I'd do a video recapping the first 11 issues along with the special edition DS9 and some of the subscriber gifts. Um, it won't be again a review of each of the models um, as I've already done that but this will be just kind of recapping on some of the weaknesses and strengths of each of the individual models. So uh, please stay tuned and I hope you enjoy. Cheers. So for issue one, this featured the USS Enterprise NCC 1701D, famous from the Next Generation TV show, and in uh, Generations, the movie, where it met his unfortunate device. Uh, this was the kind of lead model, um, one of the more impressive models in the collection as well. Um, I was very happy with the overall detail of the ship, and uh, you can see with the video that I have here, um, the aztec and window detail along with the escape pods and um, the decals were very crisp on it as well um, my only kind of downside on it would have been that um, again if you're being very critical you can see here uh, some of the windows weren't fully completed or it may have come off uh, before the drying process but overall the detail on the model was very very good and a uh, nice start to the collection so kind of whetted the appetites for um, what were what was going to come in the series so moving on to the next one so for issue two then we have the uss enterprise ncc 1701 this was the refit from the original enterprise so this first debuted in the motion picture and again met its demise um in star trek what well, kind of the end of star trek 2 start of star trek 3 um officially star trek 3 i'd say but uh, this was a nice model, um, different paint scheme than the Enterprise, so this was kind of more movie accurate. Um, I would have liked to have seen maybe a little bit more detail, um, but the, again, the decaling was very good. Um, you have the panelling along the top and underneath of the saucer section. There wasn't any overall issues with my model um, on this one. But um, again, a uh, nice little second issue there, but uh, very, very happy uh, with the overall um, model itself. And again, the way that they have kind of designed the holders for these, none of the models have any kind of divots or holes in them where you have to place in a stand bar, the exception of the Borg Sphere that I'll uh, go through at the end of this video. But you see it just clamps onto the back of it so you can take it off very easily and place it back on. But overall this model was actually very very nice. Um, just lacked maybe a little bit of detailing but uh, always good to get the NCC 170 uh, represented there with this particular model. So moving on to issue 3. We have the Bird of Prey here now. Um, again, this featured quite heavily in the TV series and in the movies. Um, a lot of different variations of this ship um, throughout the kind of canon history of Star Trek. This is a very nicely detailed. This is one of the smaller scales in the series at the time. So again, it afforded the um, Eagle Moss to kind of put a lot of detail in this. Uh, overall, there was nice weathering, uh, nice detailing on the wings, uh, on the underside, as well as the main front section of it. Uh, overall, I was actually very happy with it. The only kind of downside is the way that it's architectured at the back. It's the only place for the stand to clip in. And again, any bit of a nudge or knock and it actually falls off. I don't know if you guys had the same um on it but again they're not toys you're not going to be taking them on, up, <laughs> on and off to play with or anything like that or maybe some of you do i'm not going to judge um but as you can see here uh the weather and effect um the kind of uh life grime that would build up on a ship um on an active ship there is very well replicated on it but um nice to see the bird of prey uh, represented as well and again good construction good detailing um, very nice addition to the series. So moving on to issue four. So we have the NX-01 uh, USS Enterprise. Um, again made famous by the series Enterprise. Uh, this was one of the smaller scale ships again within the series. So again that smaller scale affords a lot more detail to be housed on these models. So as seen in the TV show itself, you have the unique kind of paint styling um, to this particular model. Um, you do have as Aztecing on it um, when you shift it through the light, you see it kind of reflecting back. Decals are nice. Uh, you see the individual portholes here, um, reaction thrusters. 
Um, again, you have your uh, drive pod, your Orkney says, again, accurately depicted as uh, seen on the TV show itself. Um, very nice model. Uh, again, kind of like the bird of prey that is a little bit fiddly um again any bit of movement and it will kind of go hence that's why i'm using the two hands here but a uh, really nice model um they did justice to it uh, i believe um i know it's very hard to do the front dish as it's very very small in comparison may i, I think maybe a little bit more effort may have been put into that to kind of make it stand out a little bit more but again i'm only nitpicking but this video is kind of about the pros and cons of each of the models as well but uh as I say with the other ones, nice addition to the series and uh, again a nice replication of what we would have been familiar with on the TV show. So moving on to issue 5, we have the Romulan Warbird. Um, so you kind of, what I've seen with the, uh, the series so far is you kind of, you're getting a federation ship, then you're getting an alien ship, you're getting a federation ship. Um, I don't know if that will stay true for the remainder of it but again it's nice to see this Goliath of a ship um, coming out so early. Nice vibrant colours, detailing is very good. Um, you'll notice here the lining of the moulding and the painting is just slightly off but it's bang on the button um, on the other side so it's it's just a little bit again tiny little issue but overall um, for such a sizeable ship the level of detail that they caught on these guys is very good. Um, you see the panelling along the wings um, that you would have seen in the TV show, very reminiscent of the Klingon and uh, Romulan design ethos as well. Uh, weathered effect, so again, this is an active ship and it's painted as such. Very stable on the mount, um, so I'm happy with that. Um, but yeah, I really like this model actually, and again, it was such an ominous ship in the next generation. And subsequent series, you know, it played a role in um, Deep Space Nine as well, um, when the Dominion War was going on. But, um, you know, just a beast of a ship and nice to see it uh, released so early in the collection. So, w moving on to issue 6 then. We have Voyager. So, Captain Catherine Janeway's ship. Um, I was happy with this model. Again, it's not a massive ship, so um, I was looking forward to the level of detail that will be captured on it. Um, the only kind of downside is when you look at the definition of the windows, the recessed uh, portholes along with the kind of paddling lines they're not very defined on the top edge but I'm just going to take this one off quite quickly if you look at the level of detail on the bottom of it like they are crisp clear you know totally as they should be very very happy with it but flip it over you see they're just kind of they're not as super defined you know I, I, I wasn't totally happy it's kind of like they're worn um, yeah, like, I, I don't know if anyone else's are like that. I, I haven't been kind of watching a lot of other reviews on these guys. Um, I'm kind of happy just with the models uh, coming to me, you know. Um, but, you know, I just thought that was a bit kind of funny. Um, like you see on the drive section here, they're almost non-distinct. But flip it over, boom, there you go. You can see them right on the under end there um, going into the warp nacelles. But, yeah, nice model. Nice to see it. Um... Nicely designed, but I think could do better. That's what I'd write on that. If I was if I was a teacher, could do better. Room for improvement. So that was Voyager. Um, happy with the mounting off it here as well. Very stable. Uh, these front heavy ships are always mounted towards the rear of the stands. So again, kind of gives it a cool look as well. So generally happy with this model, but again, I say room for improvement. So with that done, uh, we can move on to issue seven. So we have the Klingon battlecruiser, uh, Katinga. Excuse my pronunciation, I hope I'm right on that, but forgiveness if I do mess up here. Um, but this, again, was a ship we would have seen um, on the motion picture. Um, there was a little bit of internet back and forth where some of the press images showed a lot more color, um, especially on the... Um, wings off this ship but this is a film accurate model and the film had very very basic coloring on it um nice level of detail on it i was actually very happy um you can see uh detail i can just focus in there on the command section and um, that's followed right down the neck of it and uh, to show a lot more detail than on the wings again similar with the 
bird of prey and the Ramanu Warbirds, you have that kind of feathering um, detailing on it leading into the rear torpedoes and uh, impulse drive section. But actually, again, I wouldn't have actively gone out and bought this as a standalone model, um, but very happy with it when I received it. Um, when you saw the kind of original versions of these, very basic, very plain, you know, no detail in it, but again, they picked the uh, motion picture model to replicate here, and I think they did uh, justice. So, um, that's your Klingon battle cruiser. So, I hope you guys like that as well, actually. Yeah, pretty happy with that particular model. So, from there, uh, we went on to issue 8. So, issue 8 was the USS Excelsior NCC 2000. This was the ship captained by Sulu. Um, we will have seen this in Undiscovered Country on the big screen. This is one of my favourite ships. Um, I was always going to be nitpicking nit nit this particular model. Um, I think they've, did, they've done an alright job. Um, overall, um, the level of detail on it, the accuracy of the model I think is very, very good. Um, some of the kind of weaknesses of it, I just have to kind of take it out here. Again, it's very stable on the stand again, so that's kind of happy. The deflector yeah it's just it's just a painted circle in there and I don't think it's painted very very well and there's a slight kind of lip here you can see it kind of casting a shadow when I move it in the light um, they're the kind of two down points on this particular model of mine uh, the yeah like I said there's actually three you see the definition of the rear shuttle bay or lack there off it's it's very hard if you move it around you may see it but um, again, could do better on that side of things. Overall, I was actually very happy with the model. Um, I was looking forward to seeing what they would be doing with it. And um, the captured windows, the paneling lines, there's some mass teching on it as well. Um, the nacelles are kind of straightened through. True? True, if I can get my pronunciation correctly. Um, bit of give on them, but you're always going to have that with, some, with these things that are so long. But uh, a nice uh, addition to the collection. But again, there's always kind of room for movement. You're always going to find something wrong with these guys. But thankfully, there's more things right than there is wrong. So I think the overall impression of these models, um, a lot of the subscribers are happy for them. But you'd want to be. They are pricey, you know, and for those who can um, get them, um, they are looking for the best type of models that they can receive. And this is going to be one of the largest collections um, that I think have ever been produced so there's a lot of high hopes for this particular series so with that said I'm going to move on to issue 9 so issue 9 brought us the Defiant I think most people love the ship you know overgunned overpowered you know just sports car in space you know absolute brute of a ship but I think absolutely gorgeous and um, very well designed uh, very accurately um, replicated here for the collection as well uh, very happy with the paint job. Um, overall, yeah, I, I was happy with it. My initial, uh, my initial model, um, it was very wobbly, and it was actually almost hanging off um, when I um, finished reviewing. So I actually contacted Eagle Moss and um, explained that the head of it had um, come loose on it was hanging, and um, they sent another one through customer service. So I was actually very happy with that side of things. Um, overall. I don't think there's any great issues with this particular model. Um, oops, <laughs> it's stable enough on it. Um, but one thing that I didn't notice at the time is the decal is the right way around here. But if you flip it this side, look at that. Why is the um, insignia on this side? You know, that was a bit off. A uh, stupid boo. Where was quality control on that? But uh, I just display it this way. You know. <laughs> problem solved but um yeah happy happy with the model overall and um, nice to see it out so early as well so again i like to have my kind of favorite ships that i'm not kind of waiting and waiting and wait and there are a lot more ships that i'm really really looking forward to and they are far down the line but again these this is all these are always good to kind of come out early so it kind of um whets the appetite as well so pretty pretty nice ship so that was issue nine so moving on to uh, issue 10 then so we have the borg sphere uh, I wasn't really particularly waiting for this particular model, you know, it's just a ball. Um, but I think it was kind of accurately um, depicted here in this model um, from the first contact. 
where we did see it um, very heavily represented and it was in uh, Voyager as well. Um, I think they did a good job on it. Um, it's very practical, <laughs> you know. Um, the mounting on it's very good. Again, this is one of the few, um, because of its mount, you, you couldn't have it any other way. It does have um, protrusion in the stand that fits in here. But again, they have it designed so that it doesn't look out of place that if you were to mount it another way, um, you had that ability there as well. So um, nice to see that, that little thing kind of catered for as well. Um, is that much to really say about this particular model? Um, it's a Borg Sphere. It's spherical. It's got metallic components in it. You know, it's Borg. You know, uh, it is what it is. So um, moving from issue 10, was I believe another fan favorite and a favorite of mine so I'll just bring that up now so we have the Reliant again NCC 1864 so this ship made famous by Star Trek 2 the Wrath of Khan the poor ship that was hijacked um, I think this is the star of the show so far uh, for me um, as regards to quality um, level of detail just everything about this model is awesome and um, it's just so well captured and um, there is only the oops, sorry, there is only the littlest niggle on um, a portion of the impulse section for me. Ah, that's going on. Sorry. As you see, that stand is a little fiddly, so I'm going to just put my finger on it here so it doesn't uh, move off. Decals are spectacular on it, even on the warp nacelles and saucer dish on the support and wing for the weapons pod. Everything is near perfect on this particular model. Um, I always liked this ship. And I was looking forward to come for it to come into the um, collection as well, but uh, yeah, very very happy. Um, a tip of the hat to Eagle Moss here. Um, absolutely, like this, it's just almost flawless. Um, I'm re reading a lot of kind of positive feedback on um, Facebook and uh, throughout the web for this particular um, ship as well. Um, really well put together and a massive star of the collection as well. So, um, yeah, it's cool. Really, really nice ship. Um, stand, as you see there, it's a little bit because it's so front heavy. Um, you have to be kind of uh, gentle with this particular one on it. So, um, again, words of uh, wisdom there for you guys if you're putting them in a collection anyway, or if you're yet to get it, just be careful. You don't want to wreck it. Um, but yeah, that's the Reliant. They're pretty, pretty cool model. So, so far, that has brought us up to what's currently available um, or has currently been released. So rather than being available now in between that um that would be what you would have if you were getting the ships um from news agents um you would have also had the option in some news agents to get the special issue and that would have given you a very pricey deep space nine um, this is a very nice model to be honest with you it was very well packed as well so um, it, it, it came pristine in the box itself. Um, not one of my all time favorite um, models in the series, you know, um, I know it played a pre pretty dominant role within the Deep Space Nine uh, universe, but it was Cardassian design. I'm not the biggest fan of Cardassian design, but uh, the, re the level of detail in this um, is spectacular. Uh, from the pylons into the inner ring, um, the promenade windows you know just pop on that um, you have the little kind of protrusions for the docks um, along the outer ring as well but uh, I, I would have expected that this was around um, 30 wasn't it 30 30 euro almost um, so it was it was pricey but for the collection you have to have it <laughs> you know as a subscriber um, you have to have it uh, you, you don't want an incomplete collection where possible but um, yeah, I was very happy with it when it came. And they are promoting that JJ um, Abrams USS Enterprise will be the next special issue. And they haven't confirmed, but they've also said that the Vengeance, uh, they're hoping for the USS Vengeance to be a special edition as well. Now, I actually like um, those Star Trek movies. Um, I know there's not a lot of love for them, um, but I like the ship and um, I'm very um, looking forward to the Vengeance as well. Because there has been some portrayals of that through Hot Wheels, I think, and a couple of other companies. And they haven't been great. So I have high hopes for if they do the Vengeance as well. So looking forward to that. So um, that's your D-Space 9. 
so that's the first special issue that's come out so um we'll see what the next one is um hopefully it's as good as it um we know what it is but hopefully it's as good as it so if you were subscribing um you would also be uh, eligible for the subscribers gifts okay so so far um i've gotten two just going to get it here so rather than you having looking at a blank screen uh, we have the dedication plaque for the USS Enterprise and this is heavy and it's very well made um, this is accurate to what was on the bridge of the Enterprise um, D uh, on the TV show so um, the level the kind of the in kind of side joke uh, not so much joke on the show but they actually had um, cast uh, and crew members names here like Gene Roddenberry, Rick Berman um Michael Lakuda as well who did all the skins for the control panels rather than actual kind of fictitious names but again everything is etched in um the yeah everything about this is actually really good it's 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 a nice kind of little centerpiece for the collection itself as well um they are very very solid and this came fairly early in the collection as well um I think it was on my third uh delivery I said they come to me in um two so you're waiting kind of every four weeks for these models where if you get them in the shops so you can get them um, every second week but and um, that was the first subscribers gift and the second and to me more important was the future enterprise which is here in all its loveliness if i can just focus on that so again this is the enterprise from all good things which was the closing episode of the next generation um this was captain or admiral Riker. admiral Riker, i think it was yeah um ship so we had the three nacelles we had the phaser topped nacelles and we had our phaser cannons on the top um with this extra i can't remember what that was and then you have your phaser lance if i can just show you here so you had your phaser lance and then you had your kind of um hot rod wings as i call them there but a uh, really really sweet model and um, this wasn't just a duplication of the enterprise there's a different paint job on this um but yeah it was very happy um one of the things that i've seen on other replications of this model is that there's a red ring that goes around the front uh, the phaser banks um in front and behind that wasn't done on this i don't know if, if it was missed or if uh, it just couldn't be done but it would have been nice just to see it um i think they were using stock image from um, another series on their uh, website uh because it was on that uh, image but again no 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 biggie on it but um i was very happy to get this um would have liked to have had a magazine with it um that you got with all the other issues but because it was just a subscriber's gift it was just the model itself but yeah that was pretty pretty cool um so that kind of stands right in the center of my collection very happy with that guy and i was uh one of the reasons why i was subscribing as well i didn't want to miss any issues but this was a good motivation um one of the subscriber gifts as well is going to be a large borg cube that doubles as a lamp so i'm looking forward to that that valued at around 20 pounds sterling and um, so it'll be interesting to see it i think it's pretty big as well so that'll be pretty cool so so far that's all the models I have in this series. Um, the next delivery I'll be getting will have um, the USS Thunderchild, which is an Akira class um, starship. And then there should also be the Gen Hadar battle cruiser as well. So uh, pretty much um, can't wait to get those. The sooner the better. The sooner the better. Um, some of the ships I am looking forward to. Um, it'd be nice to get the USS Dauntless. Um, that was the ship that was on uh, Voyager, <clears throat> which gave you, uh, which was used as a, ru a ruse to um, capture the crew and send them back to the Borg. Um, but you can uh, look that up through the Voyager history on that uh, to give you some more details. And um, the Bajoran Solar Sailor, uh, Solar Sailor, if I can say that. Um, liked the ship in Deep Space Nine. Um, interested to see how they um, replicate it in the series. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm sure there's going to be some assembly in that because it is very, very big. Um, and some of the other ships that I'm looking forward to would be the Prometheus. Um, they're also going to do the Nebula class. So that's the Enterprise with the sensor pod on it and kind of like a, a next generation reliant 
pretty much. Um, so that'll be pretty cool as well. Um, they are still kind of adding a lot to the series. It's going to be 70 issues, hopefully, um, if not more as well. So there's going to be a massive uh, cross-section of the ships throughout the series. So um, I'm looking forward to it and hopefully I will be getting every one of these ships. So um, that concludes this totally, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it because it was totally ad-libbed. Um, I don't script these guys. But uh, yeah, that concludes my um, partial recap of the first 11 issues and subscribers' gifts. So let's uh, look forward to the next 11. And then again, guys, if you want me to focus on any of the models or if you have any um, particular reviews you want me to do, just send me a comment. Um, or you can message me on Facebook or Twitter. And details are in the section below. But again, yeah, thanks for your support and I hope you enjoyed the video and please like, share and subscribe. It um, means a lot and uh, have a great day. Stay classy. Bye-bye.